Hey YouTubians, um, this video is going to be about the relationship of metaphysics and science. Unfortunately, no more stop animation. Um, so, although this is going to be a response to uh, a video that Pyro posted, uh, it's only going to be about one issue and not Pyro's ontology. Um, it's going to be about the relationship of metaphysics and science, obviously. Uh, now, the reason that I uh, am going to link it to Pyro's video is because he uses um, two arguments uh, to support his uh, particular ontology. And this and, and some other work in the philosophy of time that I was doing um, started to get me to thinking about uh, are we licensed to deny um, certain scientific principles in our ontology? Because obviously uh, Pyro's uh, viewpoint is something which I oppose. Uh, although he appeals to certain scientific evidence to support it. Am I licensed to... Uh, is, is, does that make his argument better uh, because he appeals to it? This is, this is the issue that I'll be addressing. Um, so you guys may have noticed, and this is something that I alluded to in my quantum consciousness videos and, and uh, everything else, that there are many people on YouTube um, who make sweeping metaphysical claims about the nature of reality based on certain interpretations of quantum physics that are highly speculative at best or or you know we we might even be tempted to do it our, ourselves um we might say for example that uh the the universe is a four-dimensional space-time entity um which is an inference that we probably made from uh, a certain construal of relativity but are we licensed to actually uh, make this claim? And, and what is the correct uh, relationship uh, or construal of relationship we should have between metaphysics and science? The thesis that I'm going to be defending, uh, this is something that anyone can quote me on uh, if you want to attack the view. Uh, this is what you're going to have to attack explicitly. Um, any ontological inference made from a scientific explanation is not always justified. That's all I want to defend. Um, so it's it's quite a weak thing that I'm defending, but uh, maybe maybe I will uh, argue for something a little stronger next time. So I, I just want to say that basically, if your ontology is based on some science. That doesn't necessarily mean that your ontology is is correct or problem free, or or that we should uh, agree with you on it. So that's that's all I want to defend. Now a caveat before I begin. I think that all uh, ontological metaphysical claims, um, well necessarily they can't contradict what is known about and what is observed and what is empirical. So, necessarily, if your ontology crashes, uh, classes, clashes even with the certain empirical findings, it's wrong. I want to say that. I also want to say that um, if you decide to deny a particular construal of a theory that most people agree with, you have to give a damn good reason why you disagree with it. So there are my two caveats to, to my claim. Right, so my first argument against... Um, this this uh, drawing inferences about uh, ontology from uh, the laws of science is uh, the problem of circularity. <clears throat> now, from my understanding, uh, much of metaphysics, uh, and when I say metaphysics, I'm going to use it in the analytic sense, not the woohoo kind of spooky sense. I'm, I'm just going to be using it in this one sense. But um, so. Um, the, the thing is, my understanding of metaphysics is that uh, it kind of goes behind, uh, or above, or it grounds uh, scientific claims. Um, for example, we use notions uh, like inductive inferences. Um, we use things like um, laws of nature. We use things like exist to have a property of, um, to sort of... Uh, to cause the nature of causality, the, the nature of identity, all these are, are metaphysical issues. So, so where about? So it's 
the, the metaphysics, in my understanding, grounds what makes the science true uh, in, into terms of primitives. Uh, the primitives of our ontology, in my understanding, should be kept as small as uh, we possibly can. So, on the one hand, we've got science, but metaphysics kind of defines what science does, almost. Um, or, or what what we can learn from science and science's relationship to the world. Um, so, if someone then goes on to say that science explains our ontology, uh, in my opinion, they've got the the horse before the cart. Um, we have to make sure that people that do that have a very very clear understanding. Um, it, it may be different from our understanding but a very clear understanding of the relationship between uh, science and metaphysics. So if they can't explain causality in their metaphysics or identity or, or properties or, or so on and so forth in which the science is actually grounded, um, and then they go on to make these um, claims about ontology through science, then firstly they fail to give a second uh, an explanation and secondly they r run the risk of uh, circularity because if their metaphysics is defined by their scientific inferences and their science is defined by their metaphysics we can see that a problem of circularity emerges so that's my first uh, beef with um, drawing ontological inferences from the scientific method um, <coughs> So the first point in summary is anyone that does that uh, have better have a, a good understanding of how their science is grounded in the metaphysical. Okay, um, my perhaps my second critique um, is is somewhat more obvious. Um, it's the fact that most uh, most scientific theories or hypotheses are not baggage free. Um, they still contain with them an, a certain interpretation, a certain metaphysical baggage that comes with them. Um, so, for example, we, we might, may say Heisenberg's uncertainty principle shows us this about the universe. We might say that um, <clears throat> general relativity shows us this about the universe, but there may be a variety of other explanations equally valid of explaining the hypotheses, uh, the scientific data, and the uh, formula used to make predictions. There might be reasons which explain those equally well, but are more consistent as an ontology. So we should always, uh, we should make sure we don't contradict what's known about the world, but we should um, we should be skeptical of anyone using a particular construal uh, of the scientific theory, um, expecting it to be baggage free to support their argument, um, because there, there is no hypothesis, even in science, which is completely free of metaphysical implications. So we should always explore a variety of options. Because the, the, as I said, there are many ways to uh, construe Einstein's relativity. There are people who are called presentists who don't hold that the universe is a four-dimensional space-time structure. Uh, there are people like myself who take uh, a certain interpretation of quantum physics that doesn't necessarily entail that the fundamental structure of the universe is uncertainty. Um, so I, I, I just um, want to make the, the point clear that there are many inferences that uh, people, particularly on YouTube, draw about from particular scientific theories uh, to support their metaphysical and uh, sort of ontic commitments that perhaps aren't quite as justified as they like to think they are. Um, this is just a, a general critique. And it's something I myself am guilty of, but I just thought I'd, I'd share my point with whoever uh, wishes to discuss it with me. And I do hope that um, someone responds to this video, in fact, because I think it's quite a good area for discussion. So, peace out. Bye.